This week is National Nurses Week. Nurses play a critical role in healthcare, but the unfortunate reality is there is a shortage of nurses both across the country and right here in Western Mass. I sat down with nurses from Bay State Medical Center in Springfield to learn more about the life of those who take care of us in our time of need. Well, I think I've always wanted to be a nurse. I always tell a funny story that when I was in kindergarten, I went to Catholic school, and um, there were 52 kids in, the, in kindergarten, and um, this little girl had an accident, and the sister Marilyn was asking who wants to clean it up, and I volunteered. So kind of like at the age of five, I had the inclination. But seriously, um, I decided to go into nursing when my dad at the age of 42 passed away from uh, brain cancer. And so I, I always really wanted to go into it for that to be a different kind of nurse then. And, and I started off my career as an oncology nurse. Wow, Melissa, how about you? I had a slightly different pathway. I actually didn't want to be a nurse, like decidedly <laughs> didn't want to be a nurse. I went to school for physical therapy first. And through my co-op at Northeastern, I was able to see how all different roles in healthcare. Um, and at some point, probably in the third or fourth year, <laughs> decided that nursing might be a better fit and transferred and went to nursing school in Worcester. And from then on, it just clicked and became the thing I was probably meant to do all along. And there are different pathways correct to become a nurse. You can have your associate's degree. You can go on to get your bachelor's. Can you describe the what's uh, commonly required in Massachusetts today? One thing that we've recognized is that there is a benefit to an academic program and there's a benefit to patient safety. So in Massachusetts, the trend has been more towards hiring bachelor's prepared nurses, a BSN. For Bay State Medical Center, we made a decision years ago to predominantly hire ba um, bachelor's prepared nurses. So our nurse residency program, which is a full year residency where we provide clinical and didactic support to the new graduate nurse to make sure that they have a good solid entry level into practice but we also recognize the importance of the the associate's degree workforce and so we do hire a cadre of associate's degree nurses who then we the stipulation is they have to enter, enter a bachelor pro, um, prepared program so they get the same residency the benefit to that is that we want the nursing workforce to be diversified. So that's really uh, what our main focus has been in our recruitment efforts over the last couple of years. And you're talking about recruitment. I know that there's a nursing shortage. So how, how do hospitals handle that and, and what's the best way around that and how does that affect uh, patient care? So we're all struggling with that. I think that we are struggling with it a little bit more in the western part of the state. Uh, we have an extremely wonderful relationship that Melissa can talk about with our local colleges and we hire about 150 brand new nurses each year in three cohorts in our residency program. So uh, that's been very successful. We're about to move to have it accredited um, by a national organization. But um, strike recruiting experienced nurses get to, gets to be highly competitive. Uh, and we have, uh, you know, we're entering the generation where the average age of the nurse at the bedside is 58 years old and they're looking to retirement. At Bay State Medical Center, we do have um, a Department of Workforce Innovation and Planning, and so we work very closely with them to really look at what's the age of our workforce, how do we prepare, is there a possibility that we can overhire in certain areas, you know, the ICUs, the operating rooms, the labor and delivery areas are all where most of our seasoned nurses work, so we're really trying to plan ahead for that piece. And this also affects the colleges as well, though, right? It's it sort does, of like you, you have a nursing <laughs> shortage, and yet colleges are yes. having to turn away students? They are. And it, by the same token, if the average age of a nurse is 58, um, that's the you know average age of a nursing faculty as well. So they're looking forward to retirement as well. Um, there is a, a push to try to encourage more nurses to go for advanced degrees to be faculty. Um, the reality is that you have to you have to love it. It doesn't pay as well as bedside nursing, and it's hard work. And let's talk a little bit about being a nurse. I know that you're a mom, and we were talking a little bit about the schedules. I mean, is is it the kind of job that you can raise a family and that you can support a family on? Tell tell us a little bit about your experience. For me, it was a great um, profession because I was able to flex my time to work within my life. So when I first had my son and I didn't want to pay so much for childcare, I would work three 12 hour nights and I would try to cluster the three around one day, pay for one day of childcare. And then I had all this time with my son. When he got a little bit older and started heading towards school, that's when I started to think, okay, 
how can I free up some weekends and holidays so that I can be home a little bit more? And I started going back to school, which meant I wanted to work more during the day. So I was able to switch my schedule. Um, the other thing is that nursing is a, a great community. And people know, um, I, I grew up in nursing in a time where we had mandated um, overtime. So the, the shift would end and they'd say, I'm sorry, you're mandated, you have to stay. And I knew that as a newer nurse that didn't have children, that I would do it and that someday when I did have children, someone else would do it for me. And I think that still happens. You know, holidays and weekends, people provide cover coverage for each other. People with younger kids might say, hey, can someone cover four hours so I can open presents on Christmas morning? Oh, yeah. yeah, and it's it's great. And um, men and women, it's a great profession for anyone who wants to have a family or go back to school. There are so many different pathways to entry to in nursing today. There are graduate entry pathways for a lot of the colleges where they take individuals that have a bachelor's in a social service or some other, you know, biological sciences or whatever. Business, Business absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, they go right into being, um, getting their bachelor's degree or even their doctoral degree these days. So it, you know, taking, giving you credit for your life experience and your other credits. So really morphing. So it makes it a lot easier today. And we find that those individuals, they work out great at the bedside because they have this whole other body of knowledge that uh, the typical nurse may not have. There's a ballot initiative, um, which is potentially will be on in November, talking about requiring government mandated ratios across the state as far as nurses go. How do you think that will play out? The MNA, which represents only 25% of the nurses in the state of Massachusetts, received enough sig signatures to actually put this on the ballot. We were actually at the state house on Monday. We had staff, a staff nurse that testified in opposition to the bill. Um, it's not that everybody doesn't want more nurses. We all right, love our nurses. It mm -hmm. sounds like a great idea, but for the state of Massachusetts, we'd be short 5,400. So how are we going to find 5,400 nurses to really put at the bedside? And the biggest problem when you think about this initiative is that, well, for a nurse, speaking as a nurse, I don't want any government telling me how to practice my profession. That just doesn't make any sense. And it really um, diminishes the autonomy and the professional practice practice of the nurse at the bedside. They are unbelievable decision making, decision makers really figuring out how to craft patient assignments. Every patient is not the same. You know, the day that you get admitted, you may be sick. The day that you're discharged, you're not as sick. And so nurses at the bedside can figure out how they handle the acuity level on a floor. Um, for Western Mass, I would be concerned that hospitals would not be able to meet those ratios immediately as far as January 1st goes and services could be diminished. You know, it's not a threat, it's just re reality. We may have to close units, we may have to close um, departments, and it really will affect the general access for the patient population.